Okay, this is part two video of this fuel uh, fuel rail rebuild for uh, basically 85 to 91 uh, tune port injection. Um, I'm gonna correct something real quick. Last video I said, I said, talking about injectors for 350 TPI cars, I said they have 24 pound injectors. That's actually incorrect. They're 22 pound injectors. But if you actually upgrade your car to 24 pound injectors, you can usually adjust those out with a few adjustable fuel pressure regulator like that. So that's a possibility, but don't go putting in something like, you know, 28, 30s, you're like these 38, don't ever do that. Not without a, another angle to, uh, to tone them down. Uh, but anyway, on a stock TPI car, the injectors are 22 pound injectors. And again, I can't reiterate, if you've got the original ones in your car, get them out while you got them apart, especially if they're the gray Multex, get them out, put something new in there. Um, so they're available at auto parts stores um, and uh, South Bay Fuel Injection has them and a bunch of other sources. On this particular rebuild, we just did the O-rings within this, this kit. And so I showed you earlier, one of the trick places was that tube that uh, I always thought was part of this uh, fuel rail, but it actually has two O-rings in there. So be careful of that to make sure you do do it if you have any kind of leaks or sprays coming out of these these rails. And basically, you just put them back together, make sure you lube the O-rings up. I just use a little bit of water, honestly, because I didn't want to get anything else contaminated in there. And uh, put them all back together, tighten these up, and that's it. So this one has, this is the only one that has the, the special screw in it, which is in the regulators, a little bit longer right here. But they're all torques, they're all T25s, so not hard to do. And that's kind of that. Now, if you get new injectors, make sure you have good injector seals. I think these green seals are all, oh, I wouldn't say ethanol proof, but ethanol resistant. And I'll go into another video where I'm gonna clean these out, which they're, they're not gonna be dirty because this car has always been run clean, but I'll spray these back and forth with, the, uh, with some power to them to open them up. And, uh, and just use compressed air and some carburetor cleaner, which that's that for that. Now, one of the interesting things I found out here were a problem I was having, and I, I kind of knew about it, but I didn't know about it to the potential. This is an old adjustable fuel pressure regulator, which of course goes, you know, right here in this position. And it has a screw when you put it all together in the top that you can turn and adjust the fuel pressure regulator. Now other people, other companies make these, but I think this is probably when I bought this car and pretty much brand new almost in uh, 89, this is one of the first parts I put on it. And it's been on and off several times, you know, uh, with different motor combinations and blowers and things like that. But this is, I believe is a, a TPIS uh, in, uh, adjustable regulator. And it's seemed to work well over the years. But one of the things I've just noticed in this unit here is if you have any kind of vacuum testing ability you know, where you could suck on the, the, the tube right there when it's on, I was getting a little bit of a vacuum leak. It was not doing what it should do. And so I took it all apart, of course, when I was doing the project. And it used to have some sort of seal right here that has just been eaten up, probably ethanol fuel. Uh, even though I've run very little ethanol fuel in this car, over the years, most of this car's life has run on race gas because it's a supercharged car and it's 11 to one and it's ridiculous. But uh, that seal got eaten up, which of course would create a vacuum leak and probably always run the fuel uh, pressure up higher. So you're not gonna get the vacuum uh, sucking that down, which will regulate your fuel pressure down lower, which is what you want it to do when the, uh, the car is at idle and uh, low, you know, high vacuum, low power modes like that. So I'm gonna try and fix that one. If not, I'm gonna buy a new one. Uh, but yeah, that's an old vintage part. I think, like I said, it's probably one of the first first pieces I bought for this car. And uh, you know, everybody get, got your, your adjustable fuel pressure regulator and your K&N. That, uh, that was it on TunePort back when, when everybody was modifying them just a little bit. Now we're all going stupid with them because they can't keep up with much anymore, but they still run good. Oh, here's the other thing I wanted to show. I bought this, uh, in fact, I wish I had the guy's name and stuff. I don't think I have it in front of me on eBay, but it's just a, you can block off. This is the ninth injector port, uh, which is your cold start injector, which came around on your engine 
has a tube that comes out here and it goes into about this position here into your to your fuel uh, runners I mean your runners which uh, this particular one over here I'll go back again these are the runners we're doing on this car these high flow ones but on a factory one you can put that that part too um, right there and block that off but you also need to block that off and then you have a wire which is going to be like your ninth injector wire that sits in your harness and you can just kind of tie wrap that out of place and doing this uh, even on a car that was built with it you don't have to reprogram the car to do anything it'll it'll work it may be a little bit harder to start when it's cold but it seems to work just fine uh, it's not going to throw a code or anything like that so uh, you'll you'll be okay blocking that off. Now, I would probably have kept it, but these big injectors just make it impossible to get that tube underneath them through the valve cover to there. So it's just not worth it. It's cleaning the engine bay up a little bit. Let me put these back. All oh, these things are on titanium in any kind of shape like that. Um, so that's kind of it on the fuel rail rebuild. And of course, when we do the injectors, we're just gonna clean them out and then they go back in uh, each position like like so and the little locks lock them down and those locks are kind of there a lot of people never put those locks back in the cars and if you get the the system in there and you shove them down really well you probably don't need them but i would definitely put them in there because when you pull these things out next time the injector may stay down in the uh the intake and they'll all start coming out in a weird way but if you can put those back in definitely do that and again, uh, newer injectors, the uh, generation four, the, the tune port cars that I've changed the injectors on, for example, like, uh, let's just go over here. We're not talking about the hot rod stuff. Uh, talk about a car like this, absolute gem of an IROC, five-speed HO, uh, you know, rear disc brake, G92 convertible, rare, rare car. And it's all stock. Everything on this car is just original. And it's really, really, really nice but I put newer injectors on this car and I cannot tell you how much that helped the car. Now, this is a weird motor because this is the LB4 or L, uh, LB9 motor. Um, basically, this is the same engine as the big exhaust manifolds, the bigger cam as the one LE car. And so that's why that makes this car a rare car, five speed IROC convertible with the disc brakes and the, the G92 stuff. So, so the, these are weird most of these cars have uh, I believe 19 pound injectors in your 305 cars now this particular motor in the 1LE car ends up with a weird number 21 pound injector and so uh, a lot of people will put the 19s in there is thinking that's right but it's actually a 21 so if you have a, one of these motors uh, a five-speed IROC uh, uh, convertible with rear disc brakes and the G92, you're gonna have this engine in there. And if you ever change your injectors, just look at the part number on it and back, go to YouTube or not YouTube, but Google and look that number up and it will tell you that's a 21 pound injector in that car. So they're kind of hard to find a 21 pound. So these are actually 21 pounds I put back in this car because I didn't want to mess with anything else to keep it there. And uh, the only other trickery that this car has done to it is it has a set of, of, uh, of nice, just crane uh, roller tip rockers on it. I put on there when I cleaned it up some. Uh, I actually went back with 1.5s. I didn't even mess with the 1.6s because it's just not worth it. it. Takes a little bit of the idle away on these cars if you do that. So uh, that was it. So that's a that's an injector deal. But if you have Multex, um, the Multex are the gray ones, and they're 89, 90, and 91. And if you have those gray ones in those cars, just get them out. Don't even question it. Stop chasing other problems you have. Those Multex are going to be your problem. And so uh, I see it all the time on these cars. Is you know this is not these. This is my personal car, and I'm playing with this. But I've worked on a lot of these tune ports over the years, just for you know some of them are modified, most of them are stock. And 99% of the time, when you get a problem with an 89 to a 91 car and it's running weird and it's throwing codes and it can't keep running right and it gets hot and it doesn't run, it's gonna be those injectors. So uh, if you got the gray ones, I wish I had a set of these sitting around here to show you, but I don't. Um, and that's true, this also goes on a 91, 92, and, excuse me, a 90 through 92 ZR1. 
has the old style Moltex in it too. And, and if that car has a problem, you need to get all 16 of those things out of there. Now the 93 ZR1 it, through 95 had an improved injector on it that doesn't have the inherent problems. So it's usually got a 93 to 95. You don't have to change the injectors on the ZR1, but on a uh, um, LT5 90 to 92, you will. You re definitely need to get those those uh, the gray ones out of those cars and uh, like here's an example here this car has um, and this one I did years ago before we even really knew of all the, the issues of the the running problems on these cars that were attributed to the the Moltec injectors and so this car had the uh, this is a 90 and so it had the injectors change I did them and I don't even remember, I think I may have gone to South Bay and got the injectors. You can kind of see some of them right there. That's there, but yeah, the ZR1 is, uh, oh, in some ways it's, it's, it's a lot more uh, complicated, but in some ways it's easier to change the damn L98 because this actually comes off pretty clean. And most of the time you can reuse the gaskets if they're okay, but L98 is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, that's why I said L98 is definitely one of the most complicated cars to work on. Here's a, this is a 90. Uh, here this had these this has South Bay injectors in it which I think these are just the Ford ones this, this car is just kind of a driver nice uh, 90 and so you see there it's used to have the gray injectors and when we started messing with this car it literally would just stall out never run uh, when it got hot and not hot but w when it warmed up and so ends up being just the injectors. You could trace every problem with those Multex. What they do is they seize up when they get hot and, and uh, one problem after the other. Now here's a, this is a car to look at that's probably a model for any TPI car. This car has under a thousand miles on it. It's an 87 brand new convertible. And so this is what, though, hey, this is the, these are gonna be the Rochester injectors, the black ones, and that's what that IROC had in it too. But uh, these injectors don't really go bad. They kind of leak down when the cars are turned off and things like that, and they'll create a, a longer start and some smoke pouring out and less efficiency. Uh, and I couldn't even tell you how well these injectors are because this car just, just simply doesn't run enough to, to, uh, to really get uh, anal with it or anything, but it runs good. But if you have an, a, a Rochester injector, change them to any of these older ones, put the, put the, uh, the newer style injectors on them and you'll find out that not only does it run better, it gets more power, believe it or not. And like this IROC, it really, really picked up. And this car ran pretty good before. I mean, it's a low mile car, but when I did those injectors on it, oh my God, it, uh, I can't give you a number, but I picked up at least 15 to 20 horsepower over the way it was running. So much more crisp, and it, and it brought back that TPI sound, that rrr, rrr, that, that these cars tend to lose with age, and it's mainly because of those injectors that they lose that, uh, that growl and that, that crisp uh, throttle response. So that's just some TPI things. I know this was a fuel rail uh, uh, video, just how to rebuild the... Uh, the fuel rails on these cars, but uh, it goes more into the injectors and the issues that are common. So, and all this is being done again on just this car here, which is, this is a hot rod with a, with a 11 to one motor in it and a big board injection. It's, it's a ZZ3 engine, so, and a ZZ3 cam. It's the actual ZZ3 motor, if you can see it, so, but anyway. Uh, that motor's built up beyond the ZZ3 too. So I'll uh, make more videos of this going back together because uh, putting those big port uh, runners on this car with everything together is not an easy task to do right. And there's a lot of things you can mess up. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it being, that part being done because I'm concerned about it myself because always some fitment issues and I've already pre-fitted a lot of those. But, but anyway, so, oh, there's the other part. And we're talking about those big injectors in the, uh, in a car that uh, we're running like 38 pound injectors in this car. Cause this, this has a supercharger, a Paxton supercharger that goes on it. And it's been a Paxton supercharged car since basically new. And this is, this is called an FMU. 
which this blue line is just a vacuum line and or boost line as you want to call it because once it goes into positive manifold pressure it'll this is a real sensitive device and you can control it through this bolt here so at idle it has it'll reduce the fuel pressure of the car and at uh, under boost once it gets uh, up to boost you can vary it up to a higher number so you know we run it up in the 50 psi range and if you run some of those other injectors, the, the newer style injectors, the, the, what they call the pencil, in, or the, excuse me, the disc injectors higher, they'll lock up. Uh, so you don't want to do that with it. So you have to kind of run those pencil injectors on a system that's running way over, over uh, stock level fuel pressure. And we have to do that on this car because the computer doesn't do anything. And this is all done mechanically. So the computer on this car is basically just keeping it running like a stock L98 and it's got, you know, some uh, tunes to the computer that are basic, like turning the fan on earlier and things like that. But for the most part, even running a 400 horsepower on this car, it's a stock computer and it's all done by adding extra fuel and boost mechanically. So uh, that's kind of the trick to, uh, to an L98. Now this is an LS engine, oh my God, you could go in and program it and do everything you wanted to do to it. But not on one of these, TPI, I said, is just a, it's very, very difficult. It's, it's, uh, it's nostalgic now to a point, and it's, uh, it's people that keep working on these things, like I said, like to beat their head against the wall. That's basically what I've been doing with this car, because there's a, if you wanted to resto mod this car into something different, uh, you could put a better engine in this car. Not, not that this is a, this is a great engine actually, but a better uh, fuel injection setup on it. But one thing again, the tune port has that nothing else seems to really match is the torque. And that's what makes this car fast. It's not about the horsepower in this car. This car may make 450 horsepower, but it's gonna make 550 foot pounds of torque, maybe even a little bit more now. So uh, that's what, what makes it go and torque torque wins race and horsepower sells cars so that's kind of the trick anyway thanks for watching